I was still kind of in the traditional world thinking. And fast forward a couple of years, I'm getting my payments through this company. There was two months where I got paid and you know, I kind of saw the market was going to go down. Just took the funds from the wallet, converted it to USDC, started staking. So I'm making money in the down market now. It's perfect. A no brainer for me. Welcome back to Making Bread, where we talk about all the new ways to make money using the technology of 2022. I'm your host, NFL quarterback, Matt Barkley. My guest today is a former MLS Rookie of the Year and has been a star in the league for over a decade. He's also a pioneer in the crypto space and last year became one of the first athletes ever to receive a portion of his salary in Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. He's a forward on the field, a forward in our hearts, and a forward thinker off the field. CJ Sapong, welcome to the show, my guy. How we doing? Man, a lot better now. How cool you're making me sound. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. This is intro. great. I, I can remember when I, I signed with uh, with the Titans last year, uh, and one of the my timeline uh, on Twitter got hit up with, you got to get to know CJ Sapong. And I started looking into you, and I feel bad I didn't hear your name before that. But as a fellow athlete in the crypto space, you are definitely a pioneer. And uh, that's what kind of when I first heard about you, been following you since. Um, but do you, how, how do you like it? You kind of have bounced around. I know we've kind of both been in like Chicago, Philadelphia. If you want an MLS Cup in Kansas City, how does Nashville compare to all those? Yeah, man. Nashville for me definitely is a little bit of the, the sprinkles on the cake. Uh, I'm sure you can attest to the journey that comes with playing in new cities meeting new people, understanding the vibe and the culture. Uh, and personally for me, I think it's a big reason why I still have vitality right now. You know, 12 years in the league, it was my 11th year when I got into Nashville, came into a place that is also trying to pioneer and think forwardly yep. and, you know, was looking at putting the players in a position to help drive this, this change that we're all seeing and, and being a part of. So at this point in my career, the, the purpose is, is elevated and it's bringing even more motivation on the field. Um, yeah. And, you know, we out here trying to make some bread now, but also set ourselves up for, for after we're, we're doing our crafts uh, and, you know, That's create right. some generational wealth. That's right. Amen. And I, and I saw the Titans actually announced that they would be accepting crypto uh, I don't know if in, in ticket form yet, but definitely like around the concourse uh, and in some different forms. Is Nashville SC doing anything along those lines? Uh, it's coming soon. I don't know if you heard, but soon. our major sponsor of our new stadium, Valkyrie Investments, actually paid for the sponsorship in Bitcoin. And they're yep. utilizing a, pay, a crypto payment conversion platform, which I'm actually an ambassador of. It all tied in very organically and synchronistically um, but yeah the company that i was i started getting paid in crypto through actually facilitated the transaction between valkyrie and nashville and from talking to a couple suits and you know some other constituents it seems like the crypto movement is is one that they're heavily invested in and yeah they want to be pioneers and it just adding on to, you know, the first question you asked me, this is where, you know, I'm able to continue to find more purpose um, off the field and and yet it's providing more fuel on it. So can't complain Perfect. right now. <laughs> Keep working. I want to hear about that deal and, and the hedge and everything else you're doing. But before that, I want to get into some headlines uh, around the space in a section we call whale watching. Serena Williams and Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton have joined a group that is bidding for ownership of a British soccer giant, Chelsea. So if you could play for one celebrity owner, who would you pick? Man, Serena is up there, I must say. I just saw King Richard recently, so, you know, I respect the hustle and I respect the grind and um, did a little research after and, you know, her daughter actually has a share of a women's soccer team in the NWSL. So 
I saw that, that this was maybe a year ago. Um, and, you know, I did a little, little chest bump to her. There you go. Um, but <laughs> although Manchester United is my team, I would play for Chelsea, given uh, Serena being part of the ownership that connection. Group. I just know we could make things happen, you know, and just expand everybody. Oh, yeah. She spoke at Bitcoin conference. She's deep in the space. It'll be a good combo. That's dope. I love, I love to see that, man, because that's where us athletes, I think, can really start to maximize our value add to fans, teams, yeah. organizations by, you know, pioneering a movement, a paradigm shift. Given the socioeconomic climate, I would say we're primed for at least some alternative uh, methods of thinking. And, no doubt. you know, when people like that are stepping up. It's good to see. Like it, like it. In other news, Fidelity announced that they will now offer Bitcoin options in 401k retirement plans. This is huge. However, the decision on whether to include crypto will ultimately be up to the employers. So do you think that offering crypto retirement plans would help young people kind of get more excited about long-term financial planning and you know setting themselves up for retirement? It's a no-brainer. I mean, right. when you're looking at traditional investment vehicles and the returns that they're bringing us, even if you're converting that money into USDC and staking on a platform that's 7%, 8%, you're getting way more return than you're going to get in more traditional uh, methods. And then also... You're give- slightly beating inflation. <laughs> <laughs> that Putin price slightly, hike. Yeah, inflation. The thing that was, I think it's big, you know, supposed to be like it. part of part of the plan. But now it's like we're kind of like messing our thinking up because I learned in school that that ain't good. But we just keep pushing it up. But that's yes, right. big, uh, Bitcoin Trust Valkyrie. I have to give them a shout out. I hope that's OK. But they're starting to provide, you know, multiple different cryptocurrencies, different baskets uh, for these funds. And again, alternative opportunities boom over 10 million dollars has already been spent on nft nike sneakers for the metaverse as they're going for nearly eight thousand dollars a pop what's the most money you would spend on a pair of virtual sneakers i wouldn't spend a lot honestly i need i need a little bit more utility i need to know that it's irl i can utilize that besides the speculative investment you know that's not a grant i'm with you the wall street journal has named nashville tennessee as the second hottest job market in the country just behind austin texas so you play in nashville and i assume you live there it's it's great year-round give people a quick sales pitch for why your city is the best place to be right now (sighs) development forward-thinking people i mean property values are skyrocketing um, you have a lot of movers and shakers coming into Nashville, mm-hmm. and they're coming from everywhere. And they're bringing a different thought process. They're bringing a different experience. And where Nashville might have always been known as, you know, just a little honky tonk and Broadway, it's expanding on, on a different lo- a level, and it's becoming more diverse. And weather is nice. I thoroughly enjoy myself here. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of innovation, tech even pouring in, so it is, it is a hot spot. And last but not least, as I'm sure everyone has heard by now, Elon Musk reached an agreement to buy Twitter for $44 billion. That's with a capital B. This last question is kind of two parts. So first, what's your opinion on that? You can kind of keep it quick. I know we can probably have a whole episode on this. But secondly, if you had $44 billion dollars, what would you spend it on? That's the thing, right? If you got forty-four billion <laughs> to spend, go buy yourself a company. You you go right? do that. I don't have it. Uh, I think it's good for Twitter to have a guy who is forward thinking himself, and you know, obviously the questions of free speech and how Twitter has handled that is is big. Um, but hey, sometimes we need something new. So see what you got for us, uh, Elon. And you know, for me, if I have forty-four billion. I'm going on a deep dive. I'm copping some NFTs. I'm staking. 
I'm giving me a Bitcoin official trust. whale status, yeah. official whale status. generational <laughs> whale status. <laughs> Perfect. So overall, though, on the spectrum, you think it's it's a good move. I think Twitter. it's a great move. Again, the, yeah. we're getting to a point. There's a pressure building where it's like, OK, the modus operandi up until now hasn't always been exactly what we thought it was. And you have bigger players that are really shifting a lot of narrative and programming of people. So to allow newer, um, uh, newer minds and more uh, open-minded minds to, to step into the play, I think it gives the, the, gener uh, the population as a whole more of an opportunity to see what's out there. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be what we've been told and what we've seen up until now. Let's change it up and see how that works. Because it might not be working right now. <laughs> Elon, let's do it. All right, let's get right into it. You got an awesome story, a lot going on. Uh, you're you're just crushing it in, in a lot of areas. Uh, but I want to hear about uh, your partnership with Hedge. Because for, for people who aren't familiar, uh, I, just tell them what Hedge does and why it was a good fit for you in the space. Yeah, so I was, I was basically incurring a lot of fees trying to buy crypto from here, buy crypto from there. Worried about the security um, of these exchanges. You know, it's a little daunting at first getting into the crypto space. And what I love about Cornerstone and Hedge is they're allowing a, a traditional a traditional pathway to crypto and for me to not have to worry about which you know how much i'm putting into this crypto and did i make profit it's gone up I, i'm transferring from here to there i have an opportunity to set a dollar cost average schedule throughout the season i know every paycheck there's a portion going into this coin and that coin and it's going to a wallet one of the wallets is a ledger i'm just holding that um, yep. And then allows me to be a little bit more free with the rest of the money in my account and knowing that I've put, you know, uh, uh, some money aside towards my future, I just live in free and, you know, it's, it takes a lot of weight off the shoulders. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very great company, Hedge. And so, and so part of that deal involved you receiving a portion of your salary in crypto uh, and a few different asset coins uh, was... I mean, it was kind of break, a breakthrough moment, trend setting in a way. Was that your idea or did Hedge Cornerstone come to you with that thought? Well, they came to me with the thought. I had linked up with these, with these guys at the Litecoin conference in 2017, I want to say. Um, and I got to meet everybody. Uh, I almost was able to kind of see the cultivation of the idea take place. And again, with such a, and when you look at athletes, I mean, it's more so in MLS where we have a lot of foreign guys, guys that don't understand how things go here. And they come right. and they just spend outrageous amounts of money when they don't need to, you know, looking at that bridge for athletes from all walks of life and all different situations to be able to take advantage of, you know, the uh salaries that they're making during their career to set them up for after it was always a great idea i can't i can't lie i didn't know if it was going to be possible you know i was like yeah. i was still kind of in the traditional world thinking and you know fast forward a couple of years i'm you know getting my payments through this company i'm able to like there was two months where i got paid and you know, I kind of saw the market was going to go down, just took that the funds from the wallet, converted it to USDC, started staking. So I'm making money in the down market now. You know, it's perfect. A no brainer for me. So, so what made you decide you mentioned Litecoin and being at that conference seems like you've been involved in one form or fashion for a while with them. But what made you choose Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum or are there any others? Yeah, so that's their first. I'm essentially part of the beta program. The first coins are Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. They're gotcha. very soon adding some DeFi options. The staking option, I believe, is still in development, but 
as you know, with SEC and all these different crackdowns, I, I'm sure they're having to rethink that approach. Um, but I think with their positioning right now, especially around Nashville and the team and, you know, Nashville literal, literal like representatives in the government here are trying to make this like a crypto mecca. So I think they Continue with Miami, <laughs> it, it can get there back and forth it can get there real quick. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the positioning, everything happened organically and it's a reminder to me that it is meant to be, and we are all where we are supposed to be. It's just staying focused and continuing to educate people, you know, cause I know at first it sounded just scary. And the first thought was I'm going to lose my money. And it's like, well, if my money was sitting in a bank account, I technically would have been losing it. Whereas that's yeah. now not the case. So sometimes it takes that leap of faith. Um, but with Hedge and the streamlined opportunity to dollar cost average safely into the crypto market, I think for people that are not as um, well versed in the, in the space, it's the best play for them. How do, how do you decide what portion of your salary goes into those purchases for every month I'm, I'm assuming it's monthly for the dollar cost averaging um and do you decide specifically what coins to do or is that like a built-in feature that the program or software has yeah what, what's your yeah, process so the platform i have my profile at any moment i can change the allocations and the percentages i have gone back and forth between ethereum and litecoin more heavily just because bitcoin is a monster man like i don't see too much of an opportunity there for me. I have Bitcoin stashed just holding. That's for my daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, hopefully it's a, a world that Bitcoin is, you know, active and moving. But through through hedge, I mean, bro, I have an opportunity to have it. It goes to, you know, a secure wallet. And sometimes I'll either say, I want all Ethereum this paycheck. You know, like I went on a massive NFT deep dive the last two and a half, three months because all these things I saw at outrageous prices, you know, now we're a little bit more doable, you know. So I was, a couple of the pay st uh, paychecks, I just ah, put it all on Ethereum, Got, went on the, the app, uh, adjust the allocation percentage, boom, there, like on payday, you know, so. Easy. And, and, and so level. now that you've kind of gone through that process, what would you say to other people, not just athletes uh, or people with influence, but anyone who receives anyone who receives a salary and has the option to take it in crypto? If they asked you for advice, what do you what do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, I I right now I'm doing 20 percent of my salary. I know that might not be possible for a lot of people, but if you can find a percentage that is comfortable to you and then understand what kind of risk reward ratio you're looking for because at a low risk five percent of your salary going into bitcoin or ethereum even if you don't understand the space if you just look at historically what the price has done you're most likely going to put yourself in a position to make money whereas right. if it sits in your bank account we've seen the last two months, that money ain't doing the same for you next month. So at some point we have to kind of wipe the fog out of, out of our glasses and say, hey, like maybe 0.01% isn't all it's been cracked up to be. <laughs> That's a good point. And, and so what, what would be the reason though for not just taking 20% of your gross income and or net income and putting it into Bitcoin or, or buying it off an exchange. You're, did you, you mentioned the fees, yeah. was that kind of the big in the, the handling of it all that it's just a streamlined process? The fees are big over time. Um, but yeah. I think it's the streamlined process, the user ability of the platform and not having to, you know, go to a Coinbase and worry about, I mean, Coinbase charges you when you buy it, when you convert it, yeah. when you sell it. I just want to know that it's going straight to this wallet and what I do with it from there is my prerogative. 
or right. I just want to be able to set it and forget it. You know, I don't want to have to worry yeah. every time a paycheck comes in, like, is, do I got enough to, you know, put in this, this crypto? Am I or then you forget or you're busy one week and then you, you don't miss, do you, it. You know, you're, yeah, when you're, automated when you're, process when you're not streamlining, what I realize with me when I don't streamline, I'm getting extra emotional with the market and like, I'll get in, something pops, and maybe I'm excited. I take it out, it keeps going, then I buy it again, then it goes down. I'm like, yeah. just set, set it, forget it, and, and know, okay, over the course of the year, this is how much I plan to put in. At the end of yep. the year, look at the cost basis, and if I have to adjust, I adjust. But um, for me personally, doing dollar cost averaging has not failed me in, in about seven, eight years of being in crypto. Boom. It is tried and true. So you, you took the salary in a few different coins, and I know diversification is important. I get it. But if uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here, okay? If, if you could only take one form of crypto going forward, what would you choose? Ooh. <sighs> right now, today. Let, let's, say, let's say your your portfolio is zero. You have no coins. Because I know you're probably thinking in the back of your head, I'm already good in this area. I, I, the twofold question, I want to hear both those. You're, you've got a clean slate, and you've got one coin moving forward, and then you've got your current allocation, and then one that might pop. Okay. What do you got? I would say for the first, the former, Ethereum. There are mm -hmm. high gas fees um, at the moment. But with the amount, I, I, when I try to explain to people, I kind of explain Ethereum as an app store and it got hella apps and somebody always going to need those apps so i, I right. can't really see myself going any other route besides ethereum but where i'm at now and being you know moving in the space and it, it would be an avalanche or a polygon cheaper fees just as Hoping much accessibility whole new realms of uh opportunities you know, so yep. yeah, Polygon, Matic, or Avalanche is what I'm on right now, basically. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, those are good. Those are good answers. Uh, you're you're also so intriguing, I think, because I'm at least a lot of a lot different than some of the crypto athletes that I talk to, because it doesn't really dominate your social media like you see in a lot of other. Uh, like influencers or, or whatnot. But I mean, I was checking your Instagram. You, you, there's no even mention of it. You know, most people are throwing up their NFTs everywhere and, and kind of show, showing them off. W why is that for you? Well, one, the, the way the space is, I don't really want to bring too much attention to myself. Like, I, I'm just call. putting a target on my back, basically. Yep. And, you know, maybe for another time, I did get scammed from somebody reaching out to me mm. about crypto. And they got my trust. I s idiotically sent them money. Mm -hmm. They even sent it back. They sent more back to really get my trust. And then when I sent them more, they dipped. And, Jeez. you know, yeah. So I, that, that stung a bit. There was a lot That'll of lessons mark, learned. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I have 50, over 50 NFTs. But at, at this point, you know, we're... we're I'm building a brand, right? Right now, I'm a soccer player. Mm. You know, I do a yeah. lot of things on the side, and I'm trying to set up the landscape for when I'm done. But I do try as much as I can to focus um, on my craft. And, you know, I do, I love the opportunities like this where I get to speak about it, like, passionately. And yeah. then, okay, people yeah. see the drips. But then when I'm done playing, like, it's, it's full go mode. Uh, you know, crypto is... A large part of my life will be will be part of my children's lives. Blockchain technology is going to be part of all our lives, whether we see it or not. And I'm just patiently no sitting here, you know, planting my seeds, watching the landscape, seeing how it develops, and enjoying myself, eating some fruit. Uh, <laughs> eating some fruit. I, w I want to hear about Sacred Seeds, uh, your foundation, in, in, a, in a minute. But you mentioned 50 NFTs. That's pretty impressive. What... Uh, kind of intrigues you about that world compared to just buying coins uh, or, you know, the traditional cryptocurrencies that we see? Why NFTs? Community and utility. Mm -hmm. Some of, the, you know, mind you, of, of those 50 NFTs, 
20 of them are worth dog shit probably you know it took me a little bit to understand like okay you can't just be buying pictures from people because they said they're going to do something cool like at which i think individually in all our human experiences this is something that we need to go through stop letting other right. people carry your narrative you know buckle down and find out what you're getting yourself into to the point where now okay i'm looking at communities i'm in discords i'm seeing um you know i'm actually seeing the faces of some of these people that yeah. are developing these things as opposed to a freaking picture like i can't believe one of the first ones i bought was the whole team it was just pictures of the nft i was like oh this joint's gonna pop bought it i don't even know where it's at right now but you know, <laughs> at, through that process community community driven things i mean there's you got things like proxy ownership. You've got um, mm. VC opportunities, looking at Moonbirds. You're bringing wealth opportunities to people that will not get it in the traditional markets, in the traditional sense. Right. And when you do that, you, I think, uh, spark a different kind of illuminating um, thinking that allows the collaboration to like maximize. And it's really cool to see it in action. Yeah, and communities seems like such a driving force for a project to succeed, where the founders of the artists are heavily involved. You see them out in front. The roadmap is clear. They meet their milestones, right? It's not just some drop and then they disappear, uh, but it's it's a relationship. It's an ongoing process. And, and to me, NFTs kind of have more of a, a venture capital feel where you're kind of going to miss on some. You, you go in kind of knowing maybe that you might miss, but a few are going to hit and that's all it's going to take. Do you kind of have that mindset as an investor or, or is it a collector's mindset more so to like to trading cards or art? I don't know. I'm trying to wrap my head yeah, around no, it's that process. My, you know? my journey was essentially because I was so against it. I was, I'm old school. I'm like, man, what is this? Y'all are going to mess up this whole crypto thing. Y'all are making it, uh, yeah. you know, discrediting it. And actually I got, I ended up getting gifted an NFT and the creator, it was gifted to me from a musician in Nashville. It was gifted. He got gifted from a guy who was part of the, he had, he's a board eight yacht club holder and essentially created a derivative off of that. So that alone, I was like, all right, that piqued my attention, but I got it for free. Right. And I understand for people why it would be hard to like put your money in. That'll help you get involved. Yeah, you know, yeah. like <laughs> help me get involved. And then once, like, once I hopped in the Discord, and um, I mean, I saw like, these Twitter spaces, these people are up all times of the day trying to ask me anything. Notifications. Like, where else, yeah. what other organization, corporation you're investing in is going to say, hey, meet me at four o'clock, ask me anything? It's no doubt. different. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in there like swimwear. In there like swimwear. Love it, love it, love your thought process. Uh, so you started Sacred Seeds Foundation. Uh, tell everyone what you guys do there and why it's so important to you. Yeah, so Sacred Seeds is a nonprofit based out in Philly, based off of sustainable agriculture and the opportunity for that to increase the capacity of communities right when you see philly is a one of those cities that's very well known for their food deserts and mm -hmm. you, you know there's bodegas on every corner um but the like neighborhood gardens are like run down and you know dealing with crime and drug use and things like that so i through my own uh, enlightening through growing my own food you know i i you know how it goes, man. I caught a concussion, like, I think it was like my first year in Philly, and um, it started doing things to my neck, that started doing things to my nerves, and I'm getting injections here and there, like, I'm getting a massage, but then they're telling me, go run. So I was like, I had to do something off the field to like, put myself in a, in a better position to be able to perform, and you know, everything I looked up, and you know, first I went through supplements, and vitamins, and this, that, and the other, and once I looked at the, the science of it all and the importance of your body needing actual food to really break down the, the minerals and the vitamins and, you know, adding things that make it 
that allow you to retain the benefits of those things. All you got to do is sprinkle some seeds and some dirt. A couple weeks is there. So was it, was it the, the therapeutic aspect of gardening that you're talking about or the actual consuming, like the natural, healthy, pure ingredients of homegrown food? It started with just the pure ingredients and pure access. And it just has yeah. molded to now, which is why I like kind of go a little crazy because I'm not there anymore. So, you know, people ain't answering the emails the same way they were before. And it's different when I'm not out there, you know, with getting my hands dirty with the kids. But as we did that, as we worked towards increasing access, we recognized that the therapeutic aspect is where it's at. And our yeah. goal, which is, is still now, we were in motion to have a therapy garden. And we wanted to tie different areas of the space with different senses. You know, you have the aromas, you have the tasting area you you know right. you have the different textured plants that you can feel and just talking about it in these communities um was therapeutic but once we like put some seeds and some dirt and saw wildflowers growing up this high cutting the tops off put uh sending them to the apothecary down the street so that they can make their herbs that are healing that same community in a different aspect i'm like all right if we can do this we can change the world. Like, literally, you know, I, yeah. that's why I started it, but I didn't think, okay, you're, gonna, you're not going to change the world. But, like, there's an outrageous opportunity to have a handful of kids um, not only excited about growing their oh. own future, but now being given the nutrients, vitamins, minerals that is necessary to maximize their potential. And that's always going to give back to the community, you know? So, yeah. That's powerful. Sacred seeds, man. Sacred seeds, everybody. Check it out. Love that. Uh, last question, right? I, I know you had a baby girl a little while back. We see the playpen <laughs> behind you. And when it comes for, for saving for your children and investing in their future, do you still go digital investments? You, you kind of mentioned that a little quickly as you're you know saving for generational wealth. But do you do it digitally with, with crypto and other assets, or do you play a little more traditionally with, with you know? I mix family? it all. I mix it all. Yeah. Ultimately, I'm not going to go all the way to the other side, you know? I, I've, I have a trust that is, you know, my, my daughter is a beneficiary, and that trust actually allows me to invest in crypto and traditional markets. So that's perfect. Um, but then I have a little ledger wallet where, you know, and I'm not going to just give it to her. There will be some tasks that she will have to overcome to be able to find this ledger that's in some bunkers somewhere, in, you know, in the boondocks, you know, but... A treasure, a true tre treasure hunt. Exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah. I like that idea. It's the move. Set up clues that only they will know and only they can find. Because ultimately, like, I can still always <laughs> just have the seed phrase in, like, a safe deposit box. It's like they never find right. it. You know, but right. to like make them kind of work for it, because in my my thought process is my daughter is almost two. My stepson is almost five. This is I literally take five percent of what my uh, payment crypto conversion is and I set it aside for them. And boom, they, how much easier I, I can move through my days and how much less emotional I am when. There's a 30% drop in the markets. Like, it's really changed my quality of life, literally. So, yeah. Can't yeah it's complain. long term. It keeps your mind off it. I, I like that. Live within your means. Good stuff. So, obviously, you are a big crypto guy. And as we discussed, uh, but now, okay, it's time to test your knowledge in a different kind of way. All right. Because there are many many, many different coins and projects, DeFi names, NFT projects out there, and there are a lot of them, all right, as, as you well know. But right now, I'm going to give you three coins, okay? Two of them are real, and one of them is completely made up, okay. all right? And you have to identify which one is fake. We got about six, six or seven, do it. okay? Oh, I love Ready? this. All right, this is an all breakfast edition. Ooh. All right, which of the following cryptocurrencies are fake? 
A, waffle, B, bacon bucks, or C, pancake swap? I know pancake swap is real. Waffle and bacon bucks. I swear, that's the thing about the crypto space, though. You find, you could, <laughs> man, you could be could finding all, be all different types of names. I'm going to go with bacon bucks is not real. Bacon bucks is the correct answer. Yeah. That is a that's fake wild. made up name. And uh, I, uh, I'm involved in pancake pancake swap it's a little defy project um farming yielding anyways that's a different discussion oh yeah question number two which of these bird related cryptocurrencies is fake all right a cardinal coin b raven coin or c duck duck just could okay so definitely raven coin is real duck duck go is on the metamask so I, I can see it that being real i'm not sure though so i'm gonna say a was it Cardinal Coin? It is not. That is correct. Your intuition is right. Two for two. I like this. We're on a roll here. All right. Number three. Let's go to the fruit division now. Mm. Okay. Which one of these is fake? A, Banana Bucks. B, Grape Finance. Or C, Apple Exchange. <laughs> I feel sorry for the people that don't know anything about crypto that are hearing these names. No like, pun intended, what? but this is bananas. <laughs> just all the names. Literally. Right? Literally. This one, I must say, I, I'm i not too positive. I think it's been banana books. It's not real. It is, surprisingly. Apple Exchange is the fake made-up name of the fruit division <laughs> crypto names. All right. oh Question Lord. number four. We're, we're still on top. We got a good percentage right here. Let's see if we can get this. World Political Leaders Edition. All mm -hmm. right. Which one of these is fake? A, Trump coin. B, Putin coin. Or C, Trudeau coin. Oh, my Lord. The fact that two of those are actual coins is, is oh, yeah. wild. <laughs> People have bought them. Trump coin, Putin coin, or Trudeau coin. I would say Trudeau because it seems like they ain't messing with crypto out there. <laughs> Trudeau coin is correct. <laughs> Trump and Putin are leading the charge for so, for their own crypto. Right. I, I I hope they don't have any involvement in those, and they're just fanatics. Okay, number five. We're three for four so far. Here's one that's just for you. Which one of these soccer-related coins is fake? All right, A, kick token. B, goal coin. Or C, Soccer Hub. You get to decide how many O's and A's were okay, in that I was like, gold coin. That, yeah. that might heavily, heavily uh, determine how I answer. Kick token, gold coin, or Soccer Hub? I'm going to say Soccer Hub is not real. Soccer Hub mm. is real, in fact. And oh. the goal yeah, coin is It was one of those where I'm like, God, that's it, almost too easy. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> too fake to be real. Yeah. It's fake. Uh, all right, number six. Moving into the acronym division. All right. Let's see what you got. Which one of these is not a real crypto coin? OMG network, IDK coin, or LOL token? I wanna say now I'm just messing up. IDK. It's not real. Correct. All right. Yeah. Wow. You know that. That's incredible. <laughs> I, I know OMG very well and LOL. I feel OMG like. OMG is. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that. Yeah. OMG is an OG. They've been around for oh, a bit. Yeah. Um, LOL token was kind of on the fence, but there you go. You're right. All right. Last but not least, it's the foods that make your breath stink. All right. Not that you'd be cooking up or growing with, with sacred seeds. <laughs> all right. But which one of these are not a real coin? Tuna token, garlic coin, or deep onion? Garlic coin. Garlic coin is a real <laughs> coin. You don't know what it does or what utility it has, but tuna token is the fraud. Huh. I still think you are over 50%. Yeah. I, I mean, think you got four out of seven. Four out of seven? That's impressive. That's, that's better than I would have done. Nice. Tuna token token what are we doing I mean, yeah I, I, this is, that was fun that was fun and uh i like the you know playful uh exposure of you know kind of the bs that can be in the space 
But I tell people, man, that's in anything. Like if you look at right? every you do aspect your of our lives, there's some a lot of BS within most of it. You gotta find what's real and and uh, stick to your guns. Dope. That's right. <laughs> Right. Good stuff. Good stuff, dude. CJ, thanks so much, dude, for joining me. Talking crypto, you're playing everything. Seeds, sacred seeds. Love it, dude. Thank you, guys. If you guys enjoyed the show, please remember to rate and leave a review or subscribe if you haven't already so that you never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Barkley, and this has been Making Bread.